Okay, here's how we're going to solve problems that involve forces. And this method that I want to teach you um, isn't a method I'm teaching you just because I think it's good for you or edifying or something like that. This is the method that, that I use, that physicists use, every time we're solving problems like this. All the steps are so valuable and bring so much insight. So let's practice it just the way I'm writing it here, and I think you'll see how useful it is. What we're going to do first is we're going to draw a free body diagram, sometimes just written FBD, free body diagram. And what that means is that we choose an object in the problem, and then we draw all the forces on the object as vectors. And we leave out all the Newton's third law pairs, because then those would all just sum to zero anyway. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to choose axes. Usually X and Y for us could be X, Y, and Z, but we're going to choose X's and Y's. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to write down then that the sum of the forces on the object is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. Remembering that they are vectors. They are vectors. And so we're going to do it in components. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is solve. That's going to be the easy part. Okay, so let me give you an example. This is sort of a famous example, I guess. But um, let's imagine that we have a ramp and we have a box that's on the ramp. And the box might be doing something or it might not be doing something, but let's um, apply this idea. If the mass of the box is m, um, the forces, uh, sorry, the object that we're going to pick is pretty obvious. I hope it's the box. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw just a dot that represents the box. And now all the forces on the object as vectors. And so there are two forces, at least in this case. Um, there's gravity, and it's always downward. And then there's a force away from the surface of the ramp. Now, there might be other forces and other kinds of problems like this, um, things like friction and stuff like that. Just for now, let's pretend that these are the only two forces in a particular problem. It's a really slippery ramp, let's say. Um, and then what's, so we've, we've done part one. Now, part two is to choose axes. Now, choosing axes, there's a bit of an art to it. Well, it really comes with experience. Um, but I want to show you that you can pick any set of axes you want. Let's imagine that I'm going to pick this set. Now, maybe that's not the set you would pick. It turns out you can pick any orthogonal, right angle, set of axes you want, and you will get the same answer. So don't worry too much about your choice. Okay, so we've done part two. Now we're going to write down that the sum of the forces on the object is equal to mass times acceleration. If this ramp is at an angle theta above the horizontal, that means that the force of gravity has components along the axes that we have chosen where this angle is theta. We'll do lots of practice with this to show why that's true. But for now, I just want to demonstrate the method. And so what we're going to do is write them as vectors, which means, and we know this about vectors, if you're going to add vectors, you have to add the components first. So we're going to write down that the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction and mass times acceleration in the y direction. Okay, so what are the forces in the x direction? The only force in the x direction is gravity, which is mg, and it's going in the positive direction. 
times sine theta. That's the component of the vector that's in the x direction. In the y direction, we have the force of the ramp going in the positive direction minus mg cosine theta in the y direction. Now, lots of times you know something about the accelerations, and in this case I know that something can't go you know, into the ramp or get ejected off of the ramp. That's not how ramps work. And so this piece is zero. And then depending upon what you were asked about this question, maybe you were asked about the acceleration, you can solve from here. But here's where the physics ends. We've done all the physics. What's left is just math. Okay, let's practice.